So let's be honest, I have no idea what I've gotten myself into. Alright, in case you hadn't figured it out, I am once again in Anaheim at the Convention Center. Although this is very different from last time. This is not Religious Education Congress, this is VidCon. I'm here to learn about YouTube, about the industry, and to be gawked at confusedly by 20,000 people. Alright, for those who have never heard of it, VidCon is a major social media conference held every year, bringing together creators, their fans, and the industry to make the industry better, to collaborate, to meet, to learn about the trends. I am very excited to be here. But, if I can be honest, my first impression the first two hours of VidCon has not been a good one. Uh, my first talk was so full I couldn't get in. The second talk was kind of misadvertised, wasn't exactly what I was looking for. And they've started this thing where you gotta get in with a badge so they can track where people go, keep track of kids. The problem is that it takes too long and you have to do it everywhere you go and so even the escalators get backed up and people are getting stuck on the escalator. I just spent 20 minutes trying to get into the convention center because there are just so many people and you have to check in everywhere. So, taking a deep breath, taking a moment, and it'll be fine, I'm sure. So, I wish I could say things are getting better, but you see this line here on my left, it goes for quite a while, all leading to a conference that is already full. So, I don't know what they're doing here, but we paid money to see these conferences and they're not even letting us in because they've poorly planned. So, uh, I don't know, I guess it's time for lunch. I've got nothing else to do. So I just went to a talk with a guy named Daryl Eves. He's a guru on YouTube. He helps people build their channels. He has amazing channels himself. He's made 21 gold play buttons, which means that he has 21 channels with over a million views. And he gave a great talk about the analytics and giving strategies, and then he stood outside, even though he didn't have to, and he talked for an hour, anyone who wanted to ask him questions. And so I stood there for a long time, and he actually, he took about five minutes with me and answered some questions. He was happy to meet me, so really cool. But now I'm done with that. I'm done with the classes for a little bit, and I am braving the first floor where it's a slightly different environment. conference is that it's a mix of like kids games like throwing donuts and spotting each other with whipped cream and really high-end camera equipment like Rode and Canon here so I don't know if there's much of a crossover it's just kind of strange all right it's about six o'clock now second half of the day went much better than the first half of the day uh, talks are really great we got to hear from the chief product officer from YouTube showed some really great things that are happening Facebook had a great panel discussion learned some great things but now, it's been a long day's work, but the real fun begins. It's time to network, and most of all, get some food and some complimentary beer. Woo. There's this apocryphal story of St. Francis that people like to tell. That one day St. Francis wanted to evangelize. And so he took one of the other friars and they walked through the town. And they didn't say a word, they didn't talk with anyone, they didn't hand anything out. And when they got to the edge of town, the other friar said, 
Brother, I thought we were going to evangelize. And his response was, we just did. For the last couple hours, that's basically what I've done. I didn't know anyone here. I didn't have any reason to be here. All the talks were over, just people socializing. And so I just walked around. I made myself present. I just stopped every once in a while, pretended like I was doing something. And it's amazing how many people came up to talk to me. Sure, there were plenty of people that wanted to know if I was a Jedi or not, had some weird comments. But it's amazing how many people, of faith and not of faith, just wanted to talk, were interested, wanted to share their lives with me. I had three different people give me their life story, the struggles they face in faith. And it's just, it's just amazing, you know, just being present. And that's just the people that came up and talked to me. I don't even know the effect that it may have had for the people I walked by, for the people who gawked and stared and were confused. I think about how I'm among all the, the creators here, the people who are influencing the world. And I hope sometimes that maybe I can just influence them a little bit to make them think even just for a second about God, about Jesus. Maybe I won't convert them, but at least maybe when they're thinking, when they're acting, they'll just keep Jesus in the back of their mind. I don't know, it's just, it's amazing wearing this foolish thing, being a fool for Christ, but I can't think of anything better to do. This is the life that I've been called to live, to evangelize, to be present to people. But wait, there's more. Sure, I didn't know what I was getting myself into today at the conference, but that's not even the half of it. There's still another day tomorrow, and arguably the craziest thing I've ever done at the end of this video. You're gonna wanna wait to see what that is. And in order to fully appreciate the end of this video, we start here as I am just getting up, 7 a.m., Friday, June 22nd, on the Pacific Coast. All three of those details are very important. And now, if you excuse me, I'm late, and I need to go get ready. All right, that is more like it. It is about nine o'clock. Welcome back to Anaheim Convention Center for day two of VidCon. Gonna go to some workshops, do some networking, meet some people. But honestly, probably not gonna film a whole lot today because unfortunately I have to leave early because this is actually the least interesting part of my day. The interesting part starts now. Although interesting may not be the right word. How would I describe it? Um, foolish, crazy, stupid, ill-conceived, arduous, strenuous. Yeah, those words much better describe what I'm about to do. You see, it's about six o'clock now, and about nine hours after we started, and we could call this day done. I have done a lot. Except, this day is just getting started. I'm here at the Santa Ana airport, but no, I am not flying to Chicago. I will be there, in fact, in about 24 hours. But I have to make one stopover, about a 12-hour layover, in a little city called New York. You may have heard of it. Now, those who own a map, those who are privileged enough to own a map, will know that that's not the most direct route. And you might be wondering, what is he doing? Yeah, now you're getting the interesting part. Well, you're just gonna have to wait to find out. So that was the Phoenix airport. Wasn't that fun? Yeah, now I got an hour layover and then another flight. And welcome to Newark, New Jersey. It is now 5.30 in the morning. My body is on 2.30 a.m. time. Got a whole hour and a half of eyes closed time on the plane, so I don't know why I feel tired. Almost there, gotta get my bag, get on the train, but I'm still not ready to tell you where we're going. That, we'll just have to wait. Turns out the next train doesn't come for another 30 minutes, so uh, that kind of sucks. 
But the uh, bright side is I've got 30 more minutes to pray. Isn't that great? Also, I'm three hours early, so there's absolutely no rush. It took a ride in the car, two planes, two trains, and a heck of a lot of waiting around doing nothing. More than 12 hours of total travel, but I have finally made it to my destination. St. Francis of Assisi Church in Manhattan, where in just a few hours I'll be serving at the ordination mass of one of our classmates who I've lived with for many years. I am very excited for him, and I am very excited to be here. Now, I just have to figure out how I can get inside to get a shower. We can leave our things here, our stuff here. Well, we officially see each other, we could see. Ah, what a difference a shower and a shave can do. I took a nap, got some food, and I feel like me again. Still a little tired, but we're ready to go. I'm in the church now, and there's a buzz. About 40 minutes ago, everyone is very excited. John is here. I just went through the whole plan. All the little things I've got to do as a deacon. It's a lot. Hoping to remember it all, but I think it's all gonna go great. I'm very excited. Here goes nothing. Everybody else is the Excuse me. I was, uh, hey. Hey, hello. So what a joyous day. I am just so happy for John, so happy for our church, uh, happy to have served, and most of all, happy that we have lunch. What a great way to end this. Food. Food. So just act natural and don't look at the camera. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. It's just B-roll. There's going to be no serious. sounds. I'm going to play music and show. Look, look, the friars are people. They talk. We oh, wow. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I pray. Pray constantly. It is about 2.45 now, the people are gone, festivities are over, food put away, 
and I am absolutely exhausted. I've been up for about 29 hours right now, been to VidCon, took a red-eye flight, was a part of an amazing ceremony, and all I really wanna do right now is go to bed. And I could, this could be the end of the day, but there's still one more thing to do. I gotta get home. And so I'm here in the friary for another hour until I head back to the airport. Yes, one more flight today, and I finally get to go back to my house. Looking forward to it, but the journey is not quite over yet. And just like that, I find myself in a very familiar place, a place where I was just 12 hours ago. It's about 5.30 now, ready for my last flight of the day, and actually, my last flight until September. I know that sounds crazy given the amount of flights I've been on, but given the fact that I'm now gonna drive for the rest of the road trip, I actually won't be on a plane for a while, which is really nice. But I'm uh, gonna go find my gate, gonna get some food, and just relax. I cannot wait to get into my seat and just take a nap. Welcome to Chicago. It is about 7.30 central time now. For those who are counting at home, it has been 24 hours and I have been in Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago. I've been in three separate time zones and I am just completely confused as to what's going on. My body is just rejecting it all. I've been awake for like 35 hours with just a few naps in between and I'm here. But my journey is not quite over yet. We still have a little ways to go. And that last little bit will be completed on a bus. Because why not? I've used every other form of transportation in the last 24 hours, why not a bus? I've been in a car, on three planes, four different trains. I might as well just go out and find a body of water and take a boat, borrow someone's bicycle, cab, I don't know. Today was a fun day. Today was a foolish day. Today was a very long day. I am so happy for John. I'm so happy that I was able to be a part of it. Moments like these don't come along each and every day and sometimes you've gotta make sacrifices to be a part of them. You gotta do something crazy. You gotta go on an adventure. This is one adventure I know that I will never forget. And it is also one adventure that I'm very happy is coming to a close. It is now 8.45 central time, nearly 36 hours to the dot of when I first started, and I am home. I will catch you next week.